So basically, um, the graphics chapter, we're going to be looking at um, to create interactive plots, to basically have responsive plots, and also the rendering of plots. There's also a bit on rendering images and some of the limitations of um, basically graphics in Chinese. So basically, in this part, when we're looking at um, graphics, we're looking at interactivity, and we're basically and we're mainly using um, the plot output, and this allows basically this allows an output and an input to both be used in terms of creating an interactive uh, graphic. And the way the chapter was laid out is that we have some there's the basics and through the basics, we'll be looking at what does taking look like, um, what are the other points of events, brushing, modifying an event, the limitations and dynamic height width, um, the uh, images. So when we're talking about basics um, and interactivity, we're looking at the mouse and what are the four different um, things that you can do with the mouse. So you can click, you can double click, you can basically hover around and you can brush. And what basically brush means is, um, is to create a rectangular selection of the tool. So in this case, um, uh, for instance, uh, in this case, for instance, you'll see on this part where I've shown the code, this is, where you're including the, the new uh, plot, which is a click, which is in the plot output. And in this case, that I'll, I'll discuss in the next slide, but this is where initially we're also using this um, new, uh, anyway, uh, REQ, um, where basically we're looking at which basically means that it doesn't do anything before you click. So this is um, the basics of um, the interactivity of the mouse. Um, so when you, when now we're looking at exactly clicking, we're talking about specifically on plots, the X and Y. So on an X and Y, where are we looking at the data? And this is helped with, um, near points and where I'd initially put the REQ in the previous slide, you can see there's uh, near points and on the plot output part of the argument is now the click and um, there you put plot click. Uh, I will quickly change and um, show this. Let me so basically, I hope you can still see the screen. Um, in this case, if I hover around here, it will show you exactly like I'm clicking on specific points of the plot. So, for instance, here I'm clicking the circle, and if you see um, the x and y, this is um, miles per hour, and oh, I forgot what. But basically, it gives you those. Um, variables for those two points. And this is just the example of um, which is used in the book in terms of, so if I was to click in the empty space, I would also still get a plot and it will look for the nearest points at that point. That's why they, they use the near point um, argument. So, so I can go back here. Um, the slides don't support um, the R, um, R markdown slides don't support training, so that's the error that we have. So there's also a discussion in the, the chapter about the browser argument discussed in chapter five, which you're actually able to see what it returns, and they're basically talking about um, the plot values that are, are, are returned in this case. So in this um, in this instance, when you're talking about the different um, mouse 
points you can uh, you can do in terms of clicking, double clicking, and hovering. These all use the same approach in terms of the changing the arguments in the plot output and also adding the near points argument to in the and the server in the server section of the shiny app. So you just do basically the same thing and you just change the name of the argument. And there's also the fact that you can use different interactions on the same plot. So that's it on basically clicking and um, making the plot interactive. So here we're going to be discussing brushing. And brushing is basically creating a rectangular section with, uh, on a plot. And I don't know if anyone has had a go at this, and I hope it's clear, but this is what we're brushing I can on those points, and um, in this, in this um, specific Shiny app, the other output was a table output. And here you're able to see the different uh, values that are. So this is supposed to, uh, this is a different way to make your plots interactive. And in this case, again, in the plot output um, arguments, here instead of click, you put brush. And basically, it's a plot brush. And at the same time, in where there was the near points argument, you now then change that with uh, the brushed, uh, brushed points argument. So that's um, that's um, it on the other function of using a mouse in terms of creating a box to to uh, to basically get values uh, interactively. Um, so this part, I didn't cover too much of it, um, but basically it's um, discussing about reactive val, so which is also based on the reactive um, argument. And more of this is going to be covered later in chapter 16. But the idea here is that you, let me just also, Okay. Um, so the idea here is to kind of um, limit exactly what is reactive and what changes. So in this case, uh, you'll see again just looking at the empty cars, looking at the empty cars um, graph. You can see on the legend is true and false. So this is in terms of the brush output. And here we have, if I, for instance, select this, it will then change to be true. Um, and that would, those are certain limitations that have been put with it. Code. And if I do that here too, that would be more or less the same. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if you reselect those same points, if they would be dis deselected? So in this in this specific code, no. And also that to go back in terms of um, some of the limitations of the reactivity are in terms of um, where is it being hosted? How fast do you want it to change? And also, um, in this case, they were saying basically you might need to use JavaScript or um, Plotly. So in this case, we're not using Plotly. Um, I guess that's something. Yeah. So let, let me just the present. In the case where you where you'd ask that question.
So for instance, if I select everything, I'm gonna go to um to true. Um and can't be selected. But I think that's also based on some of the limitations of uh, reactivity functions in um okay. Thank you. So yeah, so this comes back to what the limitations are in terms of, so this is using a lot. So basically the flow of what is actually happening is that JavaScript is being used by JavaScript the people here are. And basically the mouse captures the event, then this sends it back to R and then basically this generates an, um, the the new result and a key thing here to note is that time uh, time is really important in terms of how you're drawing in terms of what you're selecting and what you're rendering so i think um from that question which was asked it's like basically it's not possible to create shiny apps where actions and response uh, are perceived as instantaneous. so and here is the solution in this um in the mastering R though, like you should use um, the Plotly package that basically is um, all, most of those plots are basically wrapped in JavaScript. And there's the book for the are interested. Um, yeah. So the next part that we're going to look at is in this chapter is looking at height and width. Um, so in the book, they also say this is not really uh, interesting in terms of uh, what, uh, in terms of looking at reactivity and interactivity if, of plots, but it's important to make sure that um, the height and, and likes are responsive to the actions. And this is done within the server function and not within the UI, but the arguments are put within the UI in terms of the, um, the arguments that are needed. So in this case, like in the slider input, where height is defined and the min and the max are defined, but in terms of the actual changing and the actual graphics and where that is happening, that's within the server function. Um, and also here, um, the data is not necessarily changing, it's just, how the plots are being displayed. Um, Jessica, I think we might have lost your voice. Um, Hello, can you uh, hear me? I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry, maybe I might just need to speak a bit louder. So I was saying um, in the book, they were talking about um, to also make the plot size reactive, you need to look at the width and height changes. Um, and here, the changes are occurring within the server, uh, server section of the Shiny app. And in the same way within the UI section, you have that the slider input and the and the, basically those parameters stay the same, but within, but the actual changing is happening within um, the server, within the server. So it's all, but basically in this case, if I do this, the, um, the plot changes, the height increases. So the data is not necessarily changing, but The data is uh, not necessarily changing, uh, but the plot is basically the plot output is changing. So this was um, looking at the height and width. So they did say this is quite an easy example that they showed in the book and probably will be more complex in when people are designing their own shiny apps and also depends on yeah, what plot and what output you're looking at. And going back, it's um, 
yeah, it's just really manipulating the server section. And I mean, it's like manipulating the the slider um, the slider sections and creating your inputs, and then the server being able to change the output with the plots being grounded. Um, so yeah. And then when it comes to images, so actually last slide. Unfortunately, the images were not showing within, I don't know why it was not picking the up splash uh, images. Um, so you can't necessarily see anything here, but the idea is, is that when you're looking at images, um, these are not, you don't use uh, the plot, render image. And yes, and basically you need to supply like uh, where the image is coming from and provide all these different arguments and the width and the height. And also you must supply the file arguments. This was important because uh, previously um, Shiny was not designed to hold or keep images. So it was just a temporary, it was just temporary, but this was a uh, change in the Shiny 1.5.0. Uh, so I can, in the, I can't find it. But basically in the chapter, it shows the images being rendered in terms of the different, um, the different extensions. So if you look at the code, Or the rendering of um the like the basically the fluid page has the select options and the image output is a photo and and the server function we have um, the content type with the width, with the height, and the sources of where the image is coming from. I, the photos were not um, wrong with something, but ideally the images should show up. Um, and yeah, that was about it in terms of, in terms of the, the graphics chapter, yeah, the graphics chapter, not too much. And just the thing, I would say that the key, our arguments of the key functions um, to look at is the, um, near points and the arguments for the plot output in terms of click or brush if you're using the rectangular and probably looking for it after chapter 16, you're looking at the objective file and making sure that um, the changes are happening, happening interrupt. So yeah, so that's pretty much a short presentation. I hope I've covered it all. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Thanks. So um I I do have a question and it may just be that ggplot2 isn't the right tool to do it, but where you were showing how you could brush a rectangle uh in the first section, I was wondering whether whether there was um a, a a typical shiny pattern for how to kind of zoom into a region of a graph, whether you could use that brushing technique along with a kind of variable X and Y limits or something like that. Um, I don't know whether you, you, you have any idea how, 
how you might be oh god might zoom into a figure yeah i think that's a good question i feel that you can find it what can be captured but i didn't look at um if you can zoom. i can actually check that out but i know for instance you can just limit what can be captured within the square or the brush um mm. the brush arguments and there's specific um x and y um what's this is put within that brush feature oh sorry i've i've actually i think i've stumbled on something on the um the the r studios shiny gallery that that shows how to do it hold on i'll put this in the um yeah, i was going to say i think i've just seen that as well i don't think it's in the chapter but, um, no, no, it just seemed a, a, a kind of related um, brush and concept. then double click the brush, but double click after you brush and then it zooms in to the area that you, you brushed. Um, uh, I think it's combining a brush and a double click, basically. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that um, probably makes sense. And you can actually put as many. And like if you can put double click, brush, click, all of that. What you, want. Mm -hmm. you can make it. You can make it as interactive. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any uh, uh, questions for uh, Jessica? Um, I've lost the chat. Yeah, I couldn't see anything wrong with your code for the um the the you know the dog images that were showing up. Nothing obviously wrong. I don't know whether it's uh but I mean I I do know that this um that that Hadley's book is kind of rebuilt each time he submit each time he changes the 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 code for it. So I would I don't know. It may it may just be that you can't access the unsplash.com or something where you are or something. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I yeah. I'll try and get it to work. <laughs> I was I think yeah, I think it's probably done something silly. If I, if I do, like by tomorrow morning, I'd have figured out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably something silly, but yeah. It, is it possible that you have to download the pictures first? I've also downloaded the images. That's where I'm like, I don't know. I, I tried the upsplash. Downloaded. I'm like, I felt it wrong. <laughs> so I'll just forget. Yeah, it wasn't really a big chapter. So. <laughs> no. Uh, just Wait. another question. Are there going to be any more changing of daylights or anything? <laughs> I don't Is think this so. <laughs> uh, no, Not for the foreseeable future. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think America and Europe and, and I think that uh, aside from um aside, aside from yourself and Shamsuddin, I don't think it where it, I, I don't think it applies to either you the, the daylight savings thing, but I think everyone else who's in the group has changed to daylight savings. So I think the, there shouldn't be any further changes to the time. Is this an awkward time for you now? No, it's just an hour earlier. So yeah. last week I came after it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad time, <laughs> so it's, it's just it's just reorienting that. Uh, but um, um, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Next week, uh, the the chapter orders got a bit 
Um, so we're slightly out of order, but next week we're doing chapter 10, which is the dynamic user interface chapter, which I, th I think relates, I, I, I've not actually read that chapter, but it, it seems to be how you can um, change the content of the user interface based on things that are evaluated in the um, server function, but I've, I've yet to read it. But uh, uh, Federica is presenting that chapter. Then we've got the bookmarking and the upload chapters the following two weeks, and then we're still looking for someone to do the tidy evaluation chapter on the 11th of May. Um, but yeah, uh, um, cool. Yeah, if, if anyone's any other uh, examples of, I, I don't know whether you've any questions or any examples of kind of something that you've done within a Shiny app that you've been developing that had a where where there were an interesting kind of um challenge as far as how you present the graphics or how you in, how the user interacts with the graphics that you've presented um anyone maybe not now maybe in a couple like maybe in a month yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. cool cool right yeah, this general um, not a, not uh something to show but just thinking about this chapter and you know the the link to Plotly. Just wondering if it, has anyone used it? Um, well, I, I have I used have. Plotly, but I haven't used it in a shiny app yet. Yeah, um, I don't know whether that's the best. It, it, it works for it's pretty much the same. So you could use it as like. <clears throat> so the nice thing about the R Plotly package, if you use ggplot2, there's just like a wrapper function you can put around your ggplot. And it'll make it interactive. Yeah. Or, or of course, you can do um, do it in Plotly itself. And and for in in terms of using it, if you've used it in like an R script or something, or a Markdown, it's hmm. pretty much the same as in Shiny. I think there's a different output. So instead of plot output, it's like Plotly output. Hmm. But otherwise, it works the same as any other plot. Because it's interesting. So I've tried it once, but um. I ended up getting rid of it just because I didn't really like like you have no control over their design decisions, so you kind of just have to accept how they how they want things to look. Um, but the one thing it does have that I don't think I've seen that shine a way to do it in Shiny is is kind of have a tooltip and have a kind of customizable, um, yeah, basically to so when you hover you can see some value. So the only thing I've seen is kind of what we looked at today is so you can hover and or you can select and um, and then the uh, a table update. Um, have I got that right? Like, what what is what's the action that a hover triggers actually in this graphics chapter? I might have missed that. Sorry, Jessica. Um, hover triggers just what um, click or uh, yeah. I think it does. So, will it update a table then, or? A, you know, a chart. It doesn't. It doesn't actually show you like a tooltip um, with values in it. Um, I had, I had, I haven't tried it, but I think also in the chapter they said over the. If you want to go in depth with over, there's more readings on it, like on the double click and hover, etc. But it's from what Hagley was saying, it's not really people. Not many people go in depth into the different things you can do with with it. Yeah, so it's kind of like I think for me it's just that idea of having a tooltip and you know something which a lot of data visualization tools kind of have as standard, but I don't really see an option in Shiny um, yet. I'm sure I'm sure you can probably do it. Cool. Yeah, you might have to just pick pick one of the JavaScript. With visual visualization libraries, mm. Mm. and you can you can adjust them. Like it's, I think with those, it's like if you just want to do more customization, you just have to, you might have to use a little bit of like CSS or JavaScript. Yeah. But if what you want to do is not too complicated, it's it's not terribly hard to learn enough to make little tweaks.
Great. Cool. Um, uh, does anyone have any other uh, questions? Um, no? Okay, cool. Right. Well, um, thanks, uh, Jessica, for for putting the presentation together and 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 taking us through the chapter, um, yeah. Like I said, uh, next week we've got the dynamic user interface chapter at the same time um, uh, as as this week. Um, great, uh, cool. Good to see you all again. Um, this will probably uh, be up on YouTube within a few days. Uh, so uh, if anyone's you know, if, if you know anyone who's missed it or, or whatever. Um, great. Okay. Good to see you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Bye. Bye.